Hello everyone and welcome to the next lecture. Our guest is Bob Barbosa. Uh, he is CIO of Barbosa Space Center and he will talk about training high school tiger teams for simulated Mars missions. Bob, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much for the wonderful introduction and I am going to start. One of my projects is trying to imagine what the first school on Mars would be like. So we did a simulated project on what that would be like. And so some of my students are working on this project as we select the topics and the different things that we would do at the first school on Mars. I am using humanoid robots to help astronauts do science experiments. So I have several humanoid robots and we are working with these robots in our lab as we do various science experiments that would be on the planet Mars. So I happen to be a design engineer that is designing what it would be like to bring a special tiger team to the planet Mars for the sole purpose of doing research and science experiments. So my humanoid robots are trained to assist the astronauts. One of the other robots our team uh, designed was a big gigantic crab. We wanted to take a message from nature and say, what would it be like if we had a Mars rover that could move along the surface like a gigantic crab? Some of my students are going to be working on the special project to make our own tennis shoes with a 3D printer that we would wear while we're inside of our habitat on the planet Mars. So I happen to be working at the Ontario International Airport, and I have a program where 50% is aviation and 50% is space. So our students can actually join the program and get a pilot's license. And then on my side of the program, the students would have an opportunity to get a space certificate and they could use that certificate to become an intern at one of the major space companies. And if they agree to work for that space company, those interns would have all of their college tuition paid but they have to agree to work for that space company. So I am in the city of Long Beach, California. Beautiful city, beautiful weather right now. And it's where 40% of the merchandise that is shipped to America arrives. So I'm in a port city. And this, these are students from the Long Beach Unified School District that are part of my Mars Tiger team. So these students are in training in, uh, to work in a simulated Mars project in which they conduct science and engineering experiments. All of my students get a uniform to wear and they get these different patches for projects. And then this uh, picture will show uh, Alyssa Carlson. She is a Mars Society member. And at one time, she was positioned to be the youngest astronaut in training. And then the person right next to her, the short person, happens to be Ed Dwight. And he is the oldest uh, astronaut in training. So he was selected by President John F. Kennedy before he was assassinated. So... They are going to make a movie about Mr. Ed Dwight. 
The other person with the captain's outfit is my partner. He runs the aviation side of the program, and I run the space side. I'm the person in the, in the green astronaut outfit. Just recently, we did a special event at the University of, uh, of Arizona, and we had one, two, three, four astronauts at that particular event. And it was just absolutely fabulous. It was a free event, and we just recently did it on September 24th. Because we have such a huge facility, we have a 50,000 square foot hangar, air, airplane hangar. We were able to throw our own space and aviation event and invite the entire community in and surrounding community. So this is a picture taken of me just before the United States went on almost complete lockdown for the coronavirus. So I should be dead right now because on one day I was at this event, on the next day, the whole country shut down. So this was an event at the Los Angeles Convention Center sponsored by the basketball team, the Los Angeles Clippers. It was a fabulous event. Look at the size of that crowd. So here we are at the Barbosa Space Center at the Ontario Airport, and I'm involved in the training of junior astronauts, junior engineers, junior scientists. And of course, we're doing uh, drone training. We're doing Mars Tiger Team training and all the things you see on that list, including cybersecurity. So, when I go to work, I have to go to work with all of these materials because I have to provide everything for 30 students. So this is what it looks like when I pack up all of the scientific equipment so we can simulate a Mars mission. Here are my students. And if you see the students in the background with those tigers, they're tiger team members. Everyone in the, in the, in the front uh, you'll see them, they're the instructors, and they have lion t-shirts. And my host today happens to be an artist, and I needed to let her know that we are also artists down here in the USA, and we're doing these, uh, these uh, translucent, uh, glow-in-the-dark type uh, t-shirts. So here we are at the University of Southern California, and my students are at work. There is the team I'm currently working with right now. And I have this big, beautiful facility. And every Saturday morning, the students go in and set it up so we can go to work. Because of the coronavirus, we have to keep lots of distance between ourselves. And we're doing that. We're wearing a mask. We're keeping distance. We're trying to keep each other safe. These are bizarre times to be teaching in person. So here we are everybody wearing a mask. These are my students. But these are not my students here. This is the beautiful team from Boeing. And I had a chance to meet Miss Astronaut Ferguson, the person all the way to the right. And he is in charge of the, uh, of course, the Boeing Starliner uh, project. And he is the very first astronaut that I personally have met in person wonderful experience. He's a wonderful person. These are students from a country called the Republic of Cabo Verde. So I live in Long Beach, California. I work in Ontario, California, but we're also working with students that are almost 12,000 miles away in the Republic of Cabo Verde, a 10 island nation off the west coast of Africa. So we use our tools and our robots, and we pretend that one of us is on, we're, one team is on Mars and the other team is on Earth, and we work back and forth with each other. If uh, any of you recognize the gentleman all the way to the right, I had the privilege of meeting Kareem Abdul Jabbar. He knows quite a bit about science, and it was a pleasure introducing him to this program. You'll see a sign uh, over to the left called Kids Talk Radio. That is our way of communicating with kids all over the world. We have, if you did a Google search of 
Kids Talk Radio Japan, Kids Talk Radio Germany, Kids Talk Radio France, Kids Talk Radio Portugal, Kids Talk Radio China. You will find that we have a Kids Talk Radio channel in most countries. All you have to do is do a Google search to find them. So here we are. We try to put our students in uniforms and give them these different patches to show achievement. And then we simulate what it's like being an astronaut doing science experiments and engineering experiments on Mars. So all of my students are involved in this kind of work. I'll go quickly. We use 3D printers to simulate all kinds of things. And we use astronaut tools. So when we do our simulations, they're as close to the real thing as possible. And we prepared these special kits for all of our students to do science experiments. I'm going to do a lecture today at, uh, what time is it? At 6.30. And at that time, I'm going to talk about growing food on Mars. So this will give you a little sneak preview. We've perfected our Martian soil. We've got all kinds of elaborate ways to grow food on Mars. And this is our special, unique uh, agricultural robotic Mars garden. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, I'll be right here in a, just an hour or so at 6.30. So here's the country of Re the Republic of Cabo Verde. Up in the northern part of these islands is an island called Santa Lucia. To us, that is Mars on Earth. So we have permission to go to that uninhabited island to do Mars research. We work on one more island, the island of Fogo, all the way down at the bottom. It has an active volcano, and we use that to simulate the volcanoes on Mars. So here is our uninhabited island. And this is what it looks like in real time. But this is the island with our active volcano. And it's so active, you can see that volcano has erupted and just about wiped out the city below. If you're interested in that, I have just posted about 12 photos of this active volcano on the internet. So it's on the Kids Talk Radio Cabo Verde channel. So here's the tools that I take when I go to work. And then we're working on something that I'm very excited about. It's a brand new program that allows us to use Zoom to operate a robot. So this is what I hope to do one day with all of you. You could operate this robot from anywhere in the world where you are right now. And this is our big Mars simulation project that we would do with you. So notice, this is a Zoom screen, but notice we have custom titles underneath the kids' names. It's because we have special permission to do a special project with robots in Zoom. This is something you might want to talk to me about after this, these sessions are over. So operating from Earth with the special robot as if it was on Mars. So all of our robots are going to end up with this kind of capability. Uh, we're doing a lot of work right now with using our robots under the ocean as we simulate working in space, and especially the work that we want to do uh, on the moon Europa. So that's another whole topic. So back to Mars. There are many places on Earth that come very, very close to Mars, and we're making it our mission to find these places. So, so but when we go on Mars, our plan is to do everything underground. Uh, we're only going to have a minimal amount of exposure on the surface. So you can see all of our underground work and what it looks like. In my 630 presentation, I will show you how we're growing plants on the ground and how we're doing. So if you were on Mars as one of my Tiger Team members, you would be living in quarters like this. Everything would be in special packages as you do your work underground on Mars. So this is what it would look in your underground facility. And you would work on different projects like this. 
And this I saved for you at the end. So I went through this presentation fast because I didn't want to blow my time. But this is a special treat for all of you that have attended my session. And let's see if it works. Because Halloween time is coming in the USA, it's a special time of the year that I love. Here is a treat for all of you. So I did it. I stuck to the schedule. I made it just on time. That's it. I'm ready for questions. That's really, really amazing. Thank you. Um, the first question is, uh, what requirements must be met in order to apply for the training program? And how long does the training take? The training program takes 10 weeks and we have designed it so we give you a fellowship and you get to participate in this kind of work for free. So that's the master plan for the design. The whole idea is to uh, work with grants and we received a pretty sizable grant to start the program. The program uh, for this year under COVID has been, uh, we started this program on 9-11. Next oh, question. Yeah. Mm, is there a limited, uh, limit in age for the participants? NASA would like us to do this program starting way down in elementary school and taking it all the way up to, to uh, high school. So the way we're positioned at this moment, we are doing high school and uh, the first year of college. And in the summertime, uh, this summer, we will take on junior high school for the very first time. And Next, uh, uh, the, the people came from our, all nations. Well, before COVID, we were planning on, I, I know you personally are from Germany. And so we were planning on getting some students from Germany to come to the United States and study with us at the Ontario International Airport. 50% of their time would be training to be an airplane pilot and the other 50% would be training to be a Tiger Team member in my program. Mm -hmm. mm, let me look if there are more questions. Um, where do you see this going or how do you see this growing? Okay, uh, what we do is we put together all of those websites that Kids Talk Radio Germany, Kids Talk Radio France. That's so you could get to see what we're doing and follow our work. And then you could read all of the articles that we have there uh, talking about what we do in a program like this. What's the uh, airplane training consists of? And who funded um, uh, this, this program? <clears throat> Uh, we were able, there is a special grant in America called the Community Build Grant. And we worked with two school districts and they received $1.7 million. So uh, with that grant, they were able to uh, make it possible for all of the students 
to have this training at no cost and all of the equipment necessary for this kind of a program was purchased through the grant. So the grant is designed to help build back these communities, of course, after COVID-19 or during COVID-19 or before COVID-19. It's just designed to help give relief to communities that are hard hit by these tough times. Um, <clears throat> what the airplane uh, training consists of? It consists of uh, 12 weeks of training uh, for, in, in, and they try to cover everything necessary for you to pass the special examination that is given to uh, airplane pilot candidates. So you're able to pass the written test. And then there is uh, the matter of flight time, where you're actually up in the airplane flying around. So it uh, includes flight hours and all of the other training necessary for you just to understand everything necessary in being able to pass a, a, a USA uh, flight exam uh, to qualify you to fly your airplane all by yourself. Um, and here's another question. Do you plan uh, to model the light delay to Mars to control robots? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, because my presentation was 20 minutes, I cut out all of the videos. So uh, I just saved that one video at the end because I was really curious to see if that video could work properly in this kind of environment. So unfortunately, because I only had 20 minutes to speak, it'd be like me telling you about 10 years of our work in 20 minutes. Hmm. Okay, uh, we have uh, seven minutes left. Maybe you want to show one of those videos? Oh, I wonder if I could do that. Uh, no, I can't do that because it's buried deep someplace else and it takes seven ah, minutes yeah. to get there and get okay. back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, are there more, qu more questions from the audience? Please put it in the chat. Oh, there are, some, there are some things I could say and, ah, uh, yeah. and it would be this. We need to find a way to connect students from around the world. So we need to think about that as an organization. So here we have a conference, but we really didn't do a lot of advertising to the schools. And, I, uh... our, and our young kids are our future. So we need to find a creative way to reach our young kids so we can, uh, you know, uh, we can put ourselves in a position to be able to spread the good word about the great things that are happening at this particular convention in all of our conventions. Yes, and here's the last question um, from Ronnie. <clears throat> He's asking, can the robots be purchased? Uh, can, can the robot, my robots can speak 12 different languages. <clears throat> No, uh, if they can be perch purchased, as a, if he can buy this. Yes, all you have to do is just send me an email and I'll get you all of the information that you need. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Bob, I thank you very, very much uh, for your nice uh, lecture. And um, who's interested can see you in the next uh, lecture, in the next uh, half hour in U10. And um, I wish you all a nice evening and we will see us again too. Okay, goodbye. Okay, goodbye everyone and thank you for attending. You should have time to get you to your next lecture. Okay, bye. Bye-bye now.